Welcome to the Cross the Line Podcast. My name is Carlos Smith, and today's episode is sponsored by KB's Car Care on 321 North Main Street in Jonesville, South Carolina. They offer hand car wash, vacuum, and clean interior. Full detail is also available. While you wait on your vehicle, customer seating is available as well as the dining area. They're open from Tuesday to Saturday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., so make sure you stop by and visit. Today's episode is also sponsored by Big Ben's Desserts. If you need to satisfy your sweet tooth, this is your pla- the place for you. They have a wide variety of desserts, including cakes, ice cream, banana pudding, and my personal favorite, Oreo cheesecake. They're open Tuesday to Saturday from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. and Sunday from 12 p.m. to 7 p.m. and close on Monday. So stop by and visit Big Ben's Desserts on 297 Spartanburg Highway in Lima, South Carolina, where nothing could be sweeter. <laughs> Today, we have another very special guest with us for the Cross the Line podcast, Self Investment Tour. I am here out in LA. This is my first time out here, which is I'm excited about. I have a very special guest. She's a fashion model, a TV host for The Ball Out, actress, so many different accolades. Today I have a, her, her name is Miss Natalie Vulovic. Did I say that right? Yes, Vulovic. Got it right that time. <laughs> How you doing today? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, no problem. Like uh, like I like to tell people kind of like the backstory, like how I um put put together a lot of my interviews. So it was crazy. Um so I knew I was going to come out here to do some interviews, and I was like, man, you know, I already had one pretty much locked down. I said, let me try to find some more while I'm out here. And um, I just started Googling. I just, I think I typed in, like, entrepreneurs in L.A., and it's just like a bunch of uh, entrepreneurs and social media. Um, um, what's the, I, wonder, I can't even remember the word I want to use for it. Social media influencers. Mm-hmm. Um, were on there, and I just, it was crazy because I, I just reached, I reached out to a, a few people, and um, it was so crazy, it's like, I, I, I typed up the email when I found you, and I was like, you know what, I don't think she's going to respond, so I almost deleted it, and I was like, you know what, I just like, man, because a lot of times, it's so crazy, because you can almost talk yourself out of doing things sometimes, but I went ahead and sent it out anyway, and uh, you reached back out to me, and I was like, cool, so we were able to, you know, put this interview together, so... I really appreciate you taking the time to, you know, have this conversation today. But um, for people watching, who is Natalie Vulovic? If I know I, I gave him like a description earlier when I first um, opened the in- interview, but who is Natalie Vulovic? That's a loaded question. Yeah. Um, as the short or the long answer, I Break guess. it down. Take your time. <laughs> Take it. Um, so, yeah, I'm a model, TV host. I do some acting. Um, mm-hmm. I grew up on the East Coast. I, uh, and I moved out to LA two years okay. ago uh, to pursue my career. Um, long story short, I guess you could say I'm just a girl who, you know, has been through some things in life and it's my number one goal and mission to just create my own journey, my own path to whatever my version of success is. So that's what I'm currently out here doing, just Absolutely. grinding. So you say you, you've you uh, moved here from the East Coast. Where are you originally from? I'm from Connecticut. From Connecticut? Yeah, Connecticut. So how was uh, life like in Connecticut besides being cold? Because I'm pretty <laughs> sure it's cold. cold. Yeah. yeah, it is cold over there. It is cold. Um, Connecticut's cool. It's a nice place to ra- raise a family. Like, just, you know, simple, small town living. Mm-hmm. Um, my life particularly was probably very different from a lot of people that I grew up around. Mm -hmm. Um, I had, I went through a lot of, you know, traumatic things in my life and just a lot of hardships. Um, And I think that's what kind of led me here today um, to, you know, not be like a product of of my environment, but to like create my own life, create my own way. Um, So growing up, you know, I had a good, a good, start and a good childhood I never lacked for anything um you know I it was a pretty normal life on the outside um but I grew up around you know a lot of drug addiction alcohol Mm. abuse um toxic family patterns um my father was murdered when I was young sorry that's okay it's okay um so I have a very interesting story and that's why I said I think it's a lot different from a lot of people that I grew up around um, because, you know, most people from where I'm at just live a very normal, healthy type of lifestyle, right. especially somewhere like Connecticut. It's just a very small knit community. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but 
Yeah, growing up was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> interesting to did say. You, did you have any siblings or were you the only child? Yeah, or? I have. Uh, mo- for most of my life, it was me and my older sister. Um, her name's Cynthia. She's six years older than me. Okay. Uh, my mom eventually got remarried and she had another daughter when I was 14. So I have a little sister now as well. Okay. What kind of things were you um, kind of interested in growing up was it sports or did you start early with fashion like what, what were the thoughts so things? i always loved um i always loved fashion i was always a girly girl mm-hmm. i always liked to you know look nice and was into stuff like that i did play sports i played softball and volleyball um when i was younger but um like I said, because I, you know, was going through a lot of things in my family life, I don't think really school was like my focus. Um, I was kind of just trying to survive every day and just kind of like figure my way out. But fashion, um, yeah. Ever since I was little, my family would always say like, oh, you should be on TV when you get older because I've always been very personable. I've always been able to talk to people. when I was younger, I guess I would like just go up to random people and be like, "Hi, I'm Natalie. What's your name?" Like, ask them a right. bunch of questions. <laughs> so the fact that I do interviewing now, I guess it falls in line. I saw you say your parents um, were from. Uh, I think they're from Europe. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm first generation born here, um, but my the rest of my family um, came over from Albania. Okay. Albania. Okay. So I'm Albanian, hundred um, percent. My mother and father's side. So did they kind of like? make it hard for you um or for your family um living in america not originally being from i mean i know you were yeah um i wouldn't say so i think just our culture is very different um so you know the way even though my mom and dad came to america when they were teenagers and i think a little younger uh throughout my life um we were still raised in like an Albanian household. So yes, we lived in America, but the way we were brought up, our values, the things that we did, um, was definitely still, you know, our own culture. Mm-hmm. My mom was married off at sixteen. Like up until wow. my generation, like arranged marriages was very normal. Um, so even though my mom lived in America, she still got you know married off at sixteen, had kids mm-hmm. very young. Um, so, but no, I think, you know, my parents came here just for a better life. Um, my father started his own businesses. He was uh, like a five-star chef. He owned, wow. he owned his own restaurants in, in New York and Connecticut. So, you know, he was here trying to uh, live the American dream. How old did you say you were when your father? I was eight. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. I was eight when he passed away. Yeah. So I still remember him, but... uh. Yeah, from what I remember, he was just, you know, always working. Mm-hmm. He was just a businessman, loved what he did, right. was very serious about his craft. So seeing what your father did, um, did it kind of like influence you early on to, you know, become an entrepreneur or was that something you didn't know what you wanted to be? I think I didn't. I think I didn't realize it, you know, at that time. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I did get his entrepreneur spirit and his and his genes um because the rest of my family you know they're very comfortable living and staying in connecticut and you know that's gr- that's great for them but i always had the desire to like, feel like it was more yeah was, like there was more for me to do mm-hmm. like do something out of the norm um and just kind of go against the grain and do my own thing so i definitely do think i get that from my, my family. yeah I, I had that conversation um, a couple of days ago um because I'm, I'm from the south and it's very like um, like very traditional, the Bible built uh, down in South Carolina, and it's just like uh, it's just different. Like a lot of times, which I, which I love it. It's home. I never forget where I'm from. Right. But it's like a lot of times people we can you know get comfortable and we just stay where we are. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of times people will talk to me about where I work at and tell me the same thing about having a great job with benefits and just staying there. Right. But it's just always to me. It's always it's something. It's just like you know. It just agitates me at times. I'm like, man, I I know there's more out here that I can do, especially after graduating from college. Mm -hmm. I just felt like it was just so much more to life than, you know, just 
doing something, just working to pick up a check and just right. being fulfilled. It, to me, it's more about being fulfilled. So mm-hmm. that's another reason it kind of led me out here to L.A., yeah. um, just taking a chance, betting on myself like I've been doing for the past, you know, four or five years. And it's been it's been a blessing. But, yeah. you know, at times, like you said, it's, 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 this is kind of leading into one of your other questions. Um, my other question is, like, I saw in Rain Magazine, mm-hmm. it said that uh, one of your biggest challenges was drowning out the noise and just paraphrasing it says that when you follow your dreams people will try to fill your mind with doubt yeah. um have you overcome those challenges or is it something you still kind of battle with it's something i i actively have to work on every day not only other people's well especially in the beginning of my journey um you know because i went through a lot of things and you know even up until my early early 20s, late teen years, I was still going through a lot of things, but I had just woke up one day and I was like, you know what, like, this isn't it. Like, I have to go, you know, I don't know what it is that I'm going to do, but I I know that there's more for me and I know that, you know, I have something inside of me that's special and I deserve Mm -hmm. to, you know, create my own path. So when I first started doing that, especially growing up um, where I grew up and my family and stuff like that, they, um, There was a lot of, you know, like, doubt and naysayers and just, like, why don't you go back to school? Like, there's a million models in the world. Like, a a million things that I I just had to kind of, like, just drown out and just be like... And and that was hard. Um, But now, years into my journey, now I live out in L.A. I I live alone. None of my family is here. So I don't think it's really other people's what they're saying in their doubt I think now because it's strictly on me I think I work actively every day to like drown out my own self doubt wow. because especially living in LA like it's hard yeah. it's hard out here those conversations I've been having with people um, earlier today just since I've been here about just you know just trying to make it out here like I know they say a lot of people you know living together like having roommates just to make it because right. it's so so tough out here. I was like, I remember one guy was telling me earlier today, he's like, man, he had a, a mortgage that was like $4,900. And I'm like, that's in San, where I'm from in South Carolina. That's, yeah. that's almost like, Mansion. yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, that's insane just to have something um, like that. But um, family wise, like who, who are those people that you talk to, you know, when you, when you're talking about your dreams of modeling and, and moving, like who are some of those people that you, um, consult with like what and what were those conversations like uh in a positive way i think the only person i can say that supports me truly is my older sister mm-hmm. even though she might not like completely understand she's i love the little life she's built for herself you know she's married she has a daughter another kid on the way mm-hmm. she's happy with her little house in connecticut with her dog and like that's for her and that's great so i don't think she you know, she's very proud of me for like breaking off and doing something different. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I think she's someone I always feel comfortable talking to about um, my journey. But like I said, I don't think she like fully right. gets it. Did know? it? Did it kind of hurt a little bit? You know, not necessarily getting the full support of the people that you wanted yeah. to have that support from. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Even uh, now, still. It's hard because, you know, especially from your own family, you would want them to fully support you and just having them like really believe in what you're doing is, I think, gives you like a push to be like, oh, okay, like I feel validated. I feel good about this. But, you know, when you're chasing your dreams and you're going against the grain and doing things that people don't normally do, I think it's hard for other people to grasp it like right. they support these famous people and they see all these famous people that's like, what's, oh, yeah. oh that's them and but just because you know someone personally it's hard for them to think that that could be you. right you know and I mean? that's one of the weirdest things man it's like the people we know like they can support and i, I don't want to i'm not talking about myself because I, I i do have a great support system but it's like a lot of times just for the average person like they'll support somebody that they don't even know like right. a celebrity yeah. but the person that they grew up with yeah. or see all the time, like they won't really fool. So I guess because they think because it's them and they know them, right. like they don't think they can achieve, achieve these that, big, right. big, big dreams, which yeah. is which is crazy. But um, 
But it's, it's one of those things, you know, for me, my parents and my support system, they always, to me, I always say my, my parents always wanted the best for me, but it's like they kind of like, you know, do the, they, they, they didn't know what they didn't know either. So it's kind of like right, they just right. worked to pay bills mm-hmm. and it was just like kind of like falling into the same tradition of doing the same thing over yeah. and over. Um, but it was like, for me, I just like, I, I just can't do it. I got to break out of the cycle and, and, you know, do something that made me feel fulfilled mm-hmm. um, because to me, it was just like, I, I just can't, couldn't settle that way. But was it for you, was it like a particular moment where it was just like, did you have like a moment where you say, you know what, I just got to step out on faith and just take this leap of faith and just leave Connecticut? Uh, well, I started my modeling journey before I left Connecticut, probably like two years before I left. Um, I was working as a bartender okay. for a really long time. So, you know, I moved out of my mom's, um, had my own apartment, was bartending. And uh, yeah, I felt like I was living a double life because I was at work every day and, uh, you know, my guests at the bar would ask me like, oh, like you're, what do you do? Do you go to school? Do you do this? And I'm like, no. And I almost felt like embarrassed to tell them like, oh, I do like modeling part time Mm -hmm. because most people are like, huh? Like it was so like out of the norm for them. Right. Um, so yeah, so some days I would have to like give up my shift or scramble to get my shift covered because I would go do like free shoots in the city. Um, how I kind of got started in fashion was this one brand hired me and I was just grateful to even be modeling in like for a brand and like on their website. So, mm-hmm. and I, had, I, I was very new to modeling, so I did most of it or almost all of it for free. Mm-hmm. Um, but to me, it was worth it. You know, I was just excited to you know, taking the train to New York every day and just, you know, living that type of lifestyle. Um, so yeah, I, I started it a few years in and then actually during COVID is when I moved, um, you know, everything shut down in April. I ended up moving that August. Um, my lease was up and I always knew I wanted to move to LA. I had no idea when or how I was going to get there. Uh, I probably decided to move a month before I did Mm -hmm. so I just sold all my stuff got rid of everything sold my car packed my clothes in boxes and just took a one-way flight out and and right in the pandemic like that was LA had just shut back down too like everything was starting to open in Connecticut but you know because there's so many people here and stuff like that um LA had shut down like two weeks prior Mm -hmm. to me coming out here so that was a challenge because you know I was like I'm going to LA and everything's closed but it was like a now or never type yeah. of thing, and I'm, I've always been like a risk taker. Did it kind of um, put a strain, strain, strain your relationship with your family when you decided to up and leave? I mean, I know you said they didn't kind of, they didn't always fully understand your dreams and yeah. what you want to do, but did that kind of strain your relationship a little bit? Um, I wouldn't say strain it. I think that they <clears throat> were really sad. Um, especially my sister, she, it was hard for her cause you know, me and her are best friends. Right. She had just had a daughter. So, you know, she just, you know, we're used to hanging out every day and being so close. So it was hard. And I think my mom, you know, didn't understand. She, she was nervous for me. I think everyone was kind of nervous. Um, like you're moving across the country. Uh, I never <laughs> even been out here before I moved here. Wow. Like I've never touched down on Crazy. the West coast at all. <laughs> it's like, I just said screw it and came. Um, but no, in the end, they threw me a going away party. It was it's amazing. I, yeah, I had my friend, my friends and family there. So, in the end, they were supportive. But but you just went all the way in on your dreams and you and you made it out here. And like you said, well, you didn't know how. You just knew you were going to do it. Yeah. And you just figured it out. Right. So landing in LA, like, what was those few moments like when you first got here? I was excited. Mm-hmm. I was excited seeing like. I remember driving from LAX. I was living in the valley at the time when I first moved here. And I remember just seeing the mountains. I'm like, oh my God, this is crazy. Because I had never seen mountains like this before. Mm-hmm. How they're just like out there everywhere, you know? Right. So it was just a surreal feeling. I was just taking everything in. And I was definitely homesick the first the first couple weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, it was exciting. I, I like change. I'm someone who like embraces it. And right. I'm not. I'm not afraid of feeling uncomfortable. Right, because this. I think that's one of the biggest things for me. You know, a lot of times, 
I I just jumped like I was like I was telling her earlier like I had to come shoot this by myself and it was just like and I I don't tell people I'm not perfect like I'm still work I'm a work in progress but I was like man I was just you know I was like some days I'm at work and I'm like this is not it and I was like man you know what I'm gonna just take a chance I'm gonna fly out to LA I mean my friend Brandon he was here for throwing his events but just just from back home. I just up and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go out. And I almost talked myself out of coming. Like I had, I still had those moments where I'm like, am I sure I really want to do this? Even like, just to visit? Even just to visit. Like yeah. I was like, man, am I sure I really want to do this? Like, am I really doing the right thing? And it was crazy because I'll tell you. So I called my brother and I was like, hey man, I got a, um, it's an event. My friend Brandon, he's throwing an event out here, and I got an interview um, that's at the Lab Factory. Um, Oh, the comedy club? Yeah, the comedy club, yeah. So I was like, man, I'm thinking about flying to L.A. And, uh, in a couple of weeks to do it. So he was just listening, and then he was like, okay. He was like, so what's holding you back? So my brother, he always support me no matter what. Mm-hmm. And he's like, so what's holding you back? And I was just like, uh, nothing really. He's like, so go ahead and go then. Yeah. So, so I was like, you know what, all right. And the next morning, I got a, because I was tracking the flights, and they were just through the roof. Oh, cool. Crazy. Yeah. yeah, so it was like almost a thousand dollars, and so then I, I found a flight. Like the next morning, after me and him had that conversation, I saw a flight, and it was like just under seven hundred dollars. So I said, you know what, I'll take it. That's so crazy. And I just, you know, I was like, man, you know what, I'm gonna just go out here and see what happened, man. And this was before I even had any other interviews lined up. The only one that I had was um the one um for the Lab Factory. Right, right. And um, but and what was crazy about that was also was. I booked it before, I mean, she told me that I was gonna be able to do the interview, but then when I booked the flight, she said uh, something came up, she won't be able to do it. So I'm like, well, I guess I'm gonna just be out here just with no interviews. And then I reached out to you and, and a couple other people, locked in some interviews, and then she finally got back to me like two days ago when I was out here and said uh, some things changed so she can do the interview. Oh, okay. but, but regardless, I was like, you know what, man, I'm gonna just take this chance and just, and just get out here. And it's like, I would just tell people, you know, you may not be able to see everything, but you just got to take that yeah. take that leap of faith. It's just for experience, you know. Exactly. So has, has your family been able to come out here to visit yet? or uh, No, they haven't come yet. It's been two years, but, you know, they're busy. You know, my sister has a little child right. now, and now she's pregnant again. And my mom's, you know, a single mom still has to provide for herself and my younger sister, so she works every day. Um, but I've gone home a couple times, so. But mm-hmm. yeah, no one, none of my friends have come to visit me yet. Hopefully soon. Yeah. So as far as modeling, did you jump right into modeling when you got here, or did you do the bartending again? Or like? I haven't worked a regular job since I've been here. I've been <sighs> thinking about it a couple times because you know, like money has been tight, and yeah, you know, doing everything freelance and being an entrepreneur. Like sometimes I'm busy, and sometimes I'm not. So. Mm-hmm. Um, I've just been kind of hesitant on doing it because it does take up a lot of time taking away from, you know, your everyday, what you're trying to do and progress. Um, but no, I kind of jumped right into modeling. Um, the first job I got out here was like two weeks, three weeks after me moving here. Um, I was just, you know, I have a website called LA Casting and there's thousands of people on it. Um, and they just post, you know, job listings every day. And one for, was like, oh, celebrity music video. And I submitted to it, not thinking anything of it. Um, I was getting ready to go to the gym. And then they had called me. And uh, it was a music video for Drake and Justin Bieber um, and DJ Khaled. Um, so I did that. And I was like, that was like my first All LA right. experience. So to me, like now I you know see celebrities or whatever or i'm around people and i'm like okay whatever um because even like in new york i was when i was tv hosting fashion week i was around a lot of celebrities but i guess just being in la and it being like a drake and justin bieber thing it was it was pretty cool yeah yeah and just the main thing just remember like there did you kind of go crazy were you like or you just yeah Because at the end of the day, you still have to remember, like, they're regular people. Oh, yeah. Like, and human. seeing them in person, it's like, you really realize that. You're like, oh, okay. Yeah. I, I had one moment like that um, my senior year in college for my internship, and I was covering the Hornets, and I told this story before. Um, it was crazy. So, you know, growing up, you know, you, you watch these guys on TV, but then when you're in front of them, it's, mm-hmm. it's different. 
And I remember um, the Hornets played the Milwaukee Bucks, and after the game was over with, we're walking down the hallway, headed to the media room to, to do some interviews. And I'm walking one way, and then Michael Jordan is coming the other uh, way. That's a good so one. when I see him, I just turn my head like, oh, like that's, that's Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't just run up to him and ask for an autograph or anything like that, but it was like, man. Yeah. But some of the best advice I ever received um, was at a media day, and this lady was in front of me, and she told me, she said, you know what? She said, don't be nervous. She said, these are your peers now. She said, and just remember that, because she said, if you put them on a pedestal, you already lost. She said, just treat them like an, the regular person, right. treat them with respect, and then you'll be fine. So that's one of the things I always remember um, now, is just like even when I see celebrities out or pro athletes, which I saw some of them last night at the uh, Rock Nation event, it's just like they're just regular people. Their financial situation may be different, but other than that, they're right. still just like the average person. Yeah, for sure. So for, as far as modeling, what would you say um, is the hardest part that people may not see or may not know about? Like, what would you say is the hardest part about modeling? Um, I think it's just the consistency and just the expectations of the industry, especially in L.A., um, you know, I think my personal opinion growing up on the East Coast, I think people are a lot more authentic and true to themselves there. Mm -hmm. um, and LA, you know, everyone says is people can be kind of pretentious, kind of fake yeah. and trying to fit I, in. And I, I got some thoughts about that too. Yeah, like it's just, it, and the more time you spend, you realize it. And, uh, Probably most people don't care, or most people are like, oh, this is cool, I'm gonna do it too. But for someone like me, my number one thing that no matter what I do, modeling, TV hosting, acting, being anyone, just a human being, my whole thing is just authenticity and like integrity. So for someone like me, it's sometimes I feel like I don't fit in here, and sometimes I feel like I don't fit in to the modeling industry because of the Sometimes, not always, right. because, but sometimes the things people do, the way you have to act, the places you have to go to be seen, stuff right. like that, it's, you know, it's not really me. So sometimes I feel discouraged because I'm like, all right, well, how can I really get to the next level without compromising who right. I am, you know? Yeah, that, that, that can be tough. Cause like I was, when you were saying that about people being pretentious, I, I almost, I kind of felt like that at that event last night is like, Sometimes it feels like people can tend to, you know, pretend for like the cameras right. and all this and that. But it's like, and I understand like you don't want to like be someone you're not just mm -hmm. to, you know, try to get on or be in, be in a position to where, uh, to win. But you, you succeed regardless, but it's like you don't want to come out of character right. just to be, you know, in the limelight. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people um, at times can do that. So how, how do you uh, overcome those moments of doubt when you feel like, you know, things are not going your way or you have those moments of self-doubt like what do you, how do you overcome those moments um i think i just try to remember the way that i feel about myself and i i have you know been around people in the industry i have met a lot of people in fashion and tv and for the most part you know a lot of people have told me like hey, you're different. Like, there's something about you that's very, you know, open and authentic. And mm -hmm. I think just having that reminder that there are people that do see that in me, it makes me stay motivated to, like, to just be like, okay, like, even though I could do certain things for a quick gain and I could do certain things to, you know, look popular in the moment or look mm -hmm. cool in the moment, I think that, um, you know what makes me me is being who I am. So I just try and always keep that in mind. But it's it's definitely hard. Mm -hmm. It's definitely I hard. I think in the, in the long run, people will respect that more. Of right. Like, they will always remember, yeah, hey, she was, Natalie was always herself. She mm -hmm. didn't come out of character. She didn't have to pretend to, to be someone else. She was just always herself. And I, I, res I can respect that more than anything when somebody, you know, just continue to be themselves instead of uh, pretending to be something, you know, that they're not yeah. um are you are you self-conscious as a model of like uh the things people say or they say they may say oh she's you know a lot of times people say this model is too skinny or she's mm -hmm. eating the wrong things are you self-conscious about those things as a model i am 
Yeah, I wish I wasn't because I think that, you know, something really beneficial is really not caring what people think. Absolutely. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, as a woman, as a model, as, you know, being in this industry, being in L.A., I think, yeah, it, I am self-conscious um, about certain things and what people say. Um, probably I'm most hard on myself than anything else. I think I'm my biggest critic. Uh, you know, which can be a good and a bad thing. Mm-hmm. You know, it pushes you to work harder to be better. But at the same time, it's like you should give yourself some credit too. Absolutely. Yeah. Because it, it, for me, it's just giving you credit just for moving out here, just selling all your things, yeah. not knowing anything. Yeah. Like that's a a big step already, just mm-hmm. not even knowing anything. Um, do do you feel like? I like to ask entrepreneurs about like the the journey of like, because at times it feels like you're. It's like a journey that can be lonely at times. It's like you feel like people don't understand you, like you're going through these things, like they don't, they already don't see your vision. Yeah. But it, for you, is it like a, like a journey of like loneliness as an entrepreneur for you as well? Yeah, especially now, you know, being out here, not being around my family, not having too many friends. Um, I'm pretty selective on like who I hang around. Right. Um, I don't like to be out everywhere accessible to everybody. Um, Mm -hmm. I really just like to spend time with people who I feel like I connect with. And so it's very far few in between out here. So, yeah, I definitely feel really lonely at times. And, like, I get really discouraged because I I have been working my ass off for years. Um, Yeah, I've been working really hard for years. So I felt like there was a time, you know, where I was continuously climbing, even if it was a slow climb. Um, even out here, still climbing continuously, and then I felt I feel like there's been times during my journey I've just like kind of plateaued, where I haven't gotten you know worse, but I haven't progressed at the pace that I would like, and mm-hmm. I think that is my biggest hurdle as being an entrepreneur is you know trusting in God's timing and, and remaining patient and remaining faithful even when you don't see the results or, mm-hmm. or feel like things are happening the way that you want them to. I, I, curr- I currently feel like that now. I, right. I currently am in a place uh, where, you know, things are hard and I'm just trying to remain positive mm-hmm. and, and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I think you you have to remain positive. Um, like we all, I think every, everybody's going through something. They may not... Um, say it and it may like even if you look on social media it may not look that way because it's like a highlight everybody posts their highlight reel but i think everybody's just going through stuff and it's it's, it can be a struggle so that's and i'm and i tell people all the time like i'm I'm not perfect like i'm going through things like i i I still have those moments of doubt like i was telling you about flying out here like not even knowing like what his interview is going to happen or anything but i was like man i just have to take a chance and just bet on myself and you just have to keep on going when, when do you feel like, did you feel like you had a moment like where things started to shift for you, where you finally felt like, you know what, I can really make it out here in L.A.? Um, I don't think there was a specific moment. I think it's just, like I said, just continu- continuing to keep pushing. Like, I can't give up because yeah. if I give up, like, then what? You know, I've, I've put in so much time. I've put in so much work. Um, so there's just no other option for me. Mm-hmm. Even if it takes longer, even if I end up, you know, doing something else, doing it in a way that I thought, mm-hmm. you know, I wasn't going to do it in. Um, I just, you know, I think you can make it out here. and You can make it anywhere if you just continuously, you know, just keep mm-hmm. pushing and keep going and, and just keep believing in yeah. yourself, you know. Yeah, and, and that's what most people I, I talk to out here, they say, you know, yeah, it's a, it's a different out here. It's more expensive and this and that. But it's like when you get out here, eventually you'll just figure it out. you just make your way. The main thing is you just got to keep on going and just, just don't give up. Um, do you have any mentors or anybody that you talk to to kind of like guide you along the way? Honestly, no. Mm. Honestly, no. No, yeah, not really, no. It probably, I probably, you know, should or, I mean, there's people along along my journey who have helped me and who have given me advice, but 
Maybe not in this field that you're in, but just like somebody that's, like you're saying, just giving you advice, just like life advice, just just different things. Not really. Mm. Mm -mm. No. And uh, so when I say, you know, even if I'm not where I want to be yet, at least who I am now, everything that I have, everything that I've done, Mm self-made. I've never, you know, had anyone to put me in any position I put myself there by just you know mm-hmm. networking working you know mm, just. I could tell man it just seemed like that's that's tough especially already you know being out here on your own mm-hmm. um, not having like like that mentor um because I definitely think getting a mentor somebody that you can like go to just for advice like in those moments of um self-doubt like I it can make a profound impact on like your journey, which you, you're still doing great, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But just having that, that person that you can go to um, regardless. Right. Like I said, my brother was the guy, was the person who just I just talked to about coming out here. But I, I still have a support system that, you know, they don't understand everything, but I, um, you just gotta keep going. Mm-hmm. And somebody, um, somebody, somebody's gonna always pick you up, even on your journey, like just out. Somebody's gonna give you a word of encouragement yeah. and keep going. Like yeah. it's always, like I gotta tell people, man, God is gonna send people your way, mm-hmm. regardless. Yeah. And it may not even be in terms of money, but um, it's just gonna send somebody your way to give you that spark or right. just yeah. anything. Something that, you need to hear, or something that like are, is a reminder. You're like, okay, like I'm, yeah. I'm doing this. So Absolutely, I'm, I'm doing it. And I know. just to, just to kind of like relate to you uh, even more is like I remember. Um, maybe like my second year moving around doing interviews and we went to uh we went to a place that was about three hours three hours away and i um i probably had maybe uh maybe 150 dollars in my account my bank account and my and i had my cameraman with me so i filled up the tank and then i had a notification about one of my bills i needed to pay so after i paid it i had maybe like 30 dollars left in my bank account and I was like, man, I know I don't, that feeling not too well. <laughs> and I was like, man, I don't want to tell him, but after this, after we fill up, I don't really have nothing else. Mm-hmm. So, the lady we interviewed, she put us on her Facebook Live, and she was like, hey, we we love what these guys are doing. So the interview went great, and when we left the interview, she um, she said, hey, um, just send me a cash app. I want to send you some money so you guys can get something to eat or whatever. And uh, so I sent her my cash app. And uh, she left me a hundred dollars, and I like I tell people all the time is the money is I don't even care about the money. It was just the message that she left in it when she texted me. She said I believe in you, oh, and nice. so it was like this lady that I never even seen before a day in my life. She um, she sent me that note and just saying I believe in you. So I just like those kind of things like they when you when you have faith and trust God, man, He's gonna guide you mm-hmm. and, and send people your way. So. That meant, meant the world to me that she didn't even know me, but for her to, you know, send me some money and saying that she believes in me, yeah. like that. I can definitely relate to that too. I feel like even, you know, before I started my entrepreneur journey, just throughout my life, just because, you know, like I said, I've been through a lot of things. God has just always, you know, provided just, um, you know, guidance and and messages and signs and people that he sends your way Uh, i can't tell you how many times through my journey back in connecticut in new york here just little things that people say that are like so encouraging like oh like you have something special or oh i see this in you or oh Mm -hmm. keep going you know so that's always a really good feeling Mm -hmm. yeah i'll I'll have to see you i tell people all the time so people watching here he goes again but I tell people all the time, it was this one interview that I did. Um, I I never say I have a favorite, but it's the one that I say is the blueprint to everything that I've done. And it was with a a guy named Ben Hall. He's probably been like one of my biggest mentors. And uh, he just changed the way I just looked at life, um, just taught me to believe in myself. Like he was somebody that saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. And he kind of like helped pull that out of me. And because of him, like I've been traveling, I got on a plane for the first time two years ago, and I was 28 at the time. Wow. And it was just like those type of things, man, when you have those people that give you those words of encouragement and they see things in you that you don't see in yourself at the time, yeah. it can just bring something out of you. And it's like, man, I really, 
I really did this, you know, like, like for me, I, like I started in the backyard with just a laptop. That's all I had. And to go from a laptop to flying all the way across the country, I mean, in L.A., it's like those things, man. It's like when those, those people will see those things and see that gift that you have, and they'll pull that, pull that out of you. So you're definitely going to have those people. Like, I'm supporting you, so you're going to have those moments where people you're going to come across these, especially in L.A., everybody's been so friendly. Like, they're going to help you get to where you want to go. That's definitely. I want to ask you, so during the modeling, how did you get the hosting gig for um, the ball out? So I recently only started working with the ball out when I moved to L.A., but my hosting journey actually, I kind of just stumbled upon it, to be honest. And it's pretty amazing that I did because I feel like uh, long term wise, that is my route that I want to go. Mm -hmm. I don't think modeling, uh, I love modeling and it's, you know, what I do mostly and how I got started, but I really found like a passion for doing stuff like this podcast, interviewing, right. just being able to like talk to people and converse. Um, but basically how I, how I started doing that was when I first started my modeling journey, the only thing I knew was I need pictures. I just need to take pictures. So mm -hmm. I was just hitting up random photographers in Connecticut just to build my own portfolio, get comfortable in front of the camera. And um, so I, I knew that I most, most people who do modeling shoot in studios. So I was like, mm -hmm. okay, I need to find a studio. I found this photographer. Her name's Emily. Um, I give her a lot of credit to a lot of the beginning of my career. Uh, I did a photo shoot with her. She posted my pictures on her Instagram and she happened to be a videographer. She, you know, mm -hmm. took pictures and did video for a network called Fashion News Lifestyle Network. And basically what they did was go to different fashion events, um, mostly like New York Fashion Week um, mm -hmm. and cover those events, interview designers, models, get coverage of all the shows, stuff like that. Um, so when her boss saw my photos on her Instagram. He said, hey, she has a great look. Let's have her host. I had no hosting experience. <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing. Um, but like I said, I've always been very personable, um, comfortable in front of the camera, able mm -hmm. to talk. So <laughs> I went from literally not knowing anything about fashion, like in the industry at least. I had no industry ties, no industry connections to interviewing people that I idolized growing up. Like I, what basically made me want to get into modeling was I grew up watching America's Next Top Model. It's like my favorite show ever. Um, and you know, I knew every season of that show. And when I started working at Fashion Week, I interviewed like a lot of the judges that were on that show. And I was just like, those are probably still some of like, the best days of my life or my mm -hmm. favorite like moments throughout my journey is like it's just crazy when you believe in yourself like you don't even not saying that I didn't work hard because I did work hard in the beginning but I was a rookie you know right. and the fact that I had just started and just by you know saying like I'm gonna believe in myself and I'm gonna go after what I want it's like God just brought me to, you know, interviewing people that I grew up in and idolized. So it was, it was really cool. So that's how I started hosting. Um, did that for a few years, covered a couple of seasons of New York Fashion Week, um, went down to Miami Swim Week. Uh, I walked in a couple of runway shows and also did hosting there. And then when I moved to LA, I found out about the ball out, I had reached out to them and they hired me as one of their hosts That's so dope. now in LA I've covered a few movie premieres um, different red carpet events stuff mm. like that it's, so you say long term that will be something more of what you want to do yeah I would love hosting? to do hosting for like you know like e-news I would love to one of my goals and I'm trying to figure out how I can do it is either you know have my own podcast kind of like this or you can do it be a host on someone else's like I really love fashion and I love, love, love music. So I would love to like be on a podcast, kind of like, uh, you know, when like everyday struggle was a thing. Right. Like Joe Budden's Joe Budden. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. Or his Academics, podcast yeah. now or like, um, 
Breakfast Club. Like, yeah. I would love to do. Man, you'll be a great like host. Yeah, a I great would. Host. I would love to do something like yeah, that. You can do it. Yeah. Trust me, you can. You can definitely do it. Just, yeah. just curious about the modeling. Is it kind of like a? Because I, I don't know. Is it like a? Would you say like a shelf life as far as like how long models can you know? Do there that? is. Yeah. I mean, now it's a little different. Um, you can you can still model in your thirties if you look mm -hmm. good, you know. But there is a shelf life. Um, and I think because I'm about to be 27, and I still, have, still, time. I still have time. Yeah, I'm still young. Time. I still yeah. have time. But, yeah, there is a shelf life, but, you know, they always want younger, yeah. newer faces. And I think, honestly, I have a lot more to offer than just what I look like in pictures. Mm -hmm. So, so when you when you tell people that you are a model, do they kind of have already have this perception of you? Yeah, like, oh. a lot of people just say like, "Oh, are you a model?" without me saying anything, because mm -hmm. um, I guess I hold myself as one. Um, but yeah, as soon as I start talking and have a conversation with someone, they're like, "Wow, you're actually like intelligent." And I'm like, "Why?" Because you think all models are dumb. Yeah. <laughs> like that's what people think. Sorry, I keep it. Oh, you're fine. Um, but yeah, a lot and a lot of models, you know, that's why they only model because it's just photo based and sometimes they don't have much of a personality. And mm. I think my best attribute is my personality. So that's why I think acting, TV hosting, doing interviews, stuff like podcasts is, you know, yeah. where I find like I fit in. Because I would I wouldn't say a model would necessarily not be intelligent. I was just like like you're saying, sometimes you, you carry yourself and people may think, oh, she's stuck up, too good that. for yeah. people. Like, they don't want to have a conversation. Yeah. Like, the that would mean, you yeah. know. Yeah, the craziest thing is, is, yeah, a lot of people assume that. I think from the way I look, they assume that I would be stuck up. But honestly, I'm actually, I'm super chill. I don't judge people at all. I could be friends with, like, a famous person and I'll be friends with, like, a homeless person. Like, who you are, how much money you have, what you look like on the outside, right. like doesn't mean anything to me. I just, anyone that I could have a conversation with and connect with, like that's what I base who I talk to off of. Absolutely. Just a few more questions and, and we'll get ready to wrap it up. I've really been enjoying this conversation because uh, I feel like we had a lot in common as far as like the journey, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, those having those moments, you may have like a little self-doubt. You may feel lonely at times. Yeah. And you need those words of encouragement. Like I still go through a lot of those things. Now, um, what are some what's some of the best advice that you've received along your journey so far? Um, I think the best advice I've received is just to, you know, have confidence and to trust in yourself. And to just trust in your journey. Um, yeah, I think just to, I think the consistency. I think, you know, um, a lot of people I've talked to just, you know, their bottom line and all things they say is just keep going. Right. And that's really what it's all about. You know, there's no blueprint to anyone's journey. Like, everyone has their own blueprint. There's no specific way to get somewhere. Um, you can idolize and see what others have done before you and you know try and follow in their footsteps right. but everyone's journey is different um, but what everyone has in common in these different journeys is that you're gonna have hardships you're gonna have hurdles you're gonna feel like giving up but as long as you keep going it's impossible for you to not reach what you want to reach because you know if you keep going how could you not Absolutely. Now, I got. I had to ask you this when I saw it online when I was doing some research. It says that you are a hip hop fan. Oh yeah. Yeah. What? What is? Who are some of your favorite artists? Like, what do you like to listen to? I'm a conscious rap person. Like, I love like real hip hop. Like, right. I don't. I listen to the new generation, like the little babies and debate. Like the in baby the gym. Dog. In the gym, <laughs> you know, I'll listen to it. But I'm like a J Cole type. Like yeah, I like Cole. Like my, yeah, Cole he's from, well, he's from North Carolina, but, yeah. you know, kind of around there. But, yeah, I'm, a, I'm definitely an East Coast, like, hip-hop fan. Yeah. Like, old-school New York rap, like, 
50 Cent, Lloyd Banks, um, Fab, Jay Z. Yeah. Oh, Dub North, yeah. yeah so. See, I, I'm from the South, so, you know, I'm, I grew up on you know, Jeezy, Jeezy yeah, T.I., right, right, uh, right. Gucci, yeah. uh, Yo Gotti, and Lil Baby. Lil Baby's dope now. Yeah, like, Lil yeah, Baby, yeah, the one, is, like. Yeah. I respect it because, you know, they're still rapping. I just right. don't like the, you know, just like some of like the street like, rap a lot of times or just more like talking about kind of nothing or repeating the same thing. Yeah. And it, like yeah. it's just it just sounds good on a beat, you know? Yeah. I like lyrics more Kendrick than is dope too. Yeah, like for Kendrick sure. album was, was dope. Yeah, for sure. I like I like West Coast rap too. You yeah. Know? Game, Snoop. Yeah, the game yeah. is dope. I like yeah. Nip. Yeah, so we got we like a lot of the, a lot of the same artists as yeah, well. I'm definitely at like a. That's why I want to do like I would love to be on like a show like The Breakfast Club or Everyday yeah. Show. Yeah, just like to converse about music. I can do that all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are some of my my favorite. So, what was your favorite album so far this year? I gotta. I want to ask. This year, um, I'm trying to think of what album shot this year. You Other got than, you yes, got Kendrick. You I got, don't like the Drake album. Like not the last like, one he put out. Yeah. No, that was terrible. Yeah, no, terrible. No, that was awful. Yeah, that was. I don't know. I couldn't get with that one. Yeah, me either. I, I like the Kendrick, Pusha yeah. T. Um, I like Yo Gotti's album. Like I didn't listen to Yo Gotti's overall, album. Overall, I, w- I would say Kendrick probably had a, a, a better album. But, yeah. like, would you say it's a favor for mine? I mean, I play Gotti album all, all the time. I think it's still kind of like... We're only halfway into the yeah. year, but within like the last couple of years, um, yeah, definitely like Pusha T's album, yeah. um, Cole's last album, Off Season. Yeah, really, Off Season was dope. Yeah, Victory Lap was still one of my favorite yeah. albums as well. Uh, yeah, that's a good one too. Yeah, um, just a few more questions. Um, what advice would you uh, give to your younger self? Hmm, that's a good question. Uh, my younger self. I would, I think I would tell my younger self to not worry so much about other people. I think when I was younger, I spent a lot of time basing decisions off other people or trying to people please or make people happy. And I wasn't, you know, selfish enough with my decisions. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm just, I'm, and I, I don't regret this about myself or think it's a bad thing. I think it's a good thing if you can, you know, moderate it and, and not do it too much. But I'm just a very giving person. Right. I like to help people. I, I like to pour into people. But I think, you know, when I was younger and naive, I probably poured into the wrong people too much. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, and just to believe in myself, not doubt myself so much. Absolutely. Um, these are my final two questions. So I asked you what advice you give to your younger self. Now this one is, what advice would you give to someone else who's out there, you know, pursuing their dreams? And they may have those moments of doubt. Um, they're afraid to, you know, take that step, step out on faith. What advice would you give someone who wants to pursue their dreams? Um, I would say just take the risk. Just get started. Just, you know, because... If, if you never step off the ledge, then you'll never, you'll never have even the chance to fail. Mm-hmm. And failure isn't just failure and that's it. It's lessons. It's, you know, learning curves. It's steps. So I would just say to someone who wants to branch out, just, just do it. Just get started because you might not know every step of the way. Like you said, like I said, we don't. Even still now, like tomorrow, it's a different day. I don't know exactly what's exactly. going to happen for me, but I know that because I already took the leap, I already took the chance, I did that, and, and things will just unfold for you if Absolutely. you really like just believe in yourself and, and take the necessary steps. It'll, it'll unfold Absolutely. for you. Absolutely, because nobody knows everything that's yeah. going to um, happen. Like, just, like you say, take that leap of faith. Um, just be willing to take the first step. And uh, I, th- I read it. I can't, what book was that I read it in? It was saying, might have been Think and Grow Rich. Mm-hmm. It was uh, the universe doesn't. Um, it says the universe doesn't al- align everything for you, um, but you, you just have to be. It doesn't align against you. You just have to be willing to make those steps right. and work towards something, and it'll if things will fall in place. Not saying it's going to be perfect. You might not get it when you want it, but as long as you stay consistent and working towards a dream and have and 
be precise of what you want, have definite demands, things will, you know, work in your favor. Mm -hmm. So my final question as we get ready to wrap this up, this is the Cross the Line Podcast Self-Investment Tour. So my final question that I'd like to ask everyone is, what does self-investment mean to you? Self-investment, I think it's betting on yourself every day. I don't think, you know, probably when people hear self-investment, they just think money, like investing right. money into yourself. But I think it's investing your time, your dedication, uh, your faith, your trust, your money, your decisions, just it's just betting on yourself. It's just investing in you and the things that you want to do in your life. Absolutely. Natalie, I want to thank you again um, for taking the time to um, sit down and have a conversation with me. And I really enjoyed this. This was great. Yeah, me too. And then uh, just hear your story, like I was telling you, like it's so similar, like, you know, those moments of where you may question things and you got to bet on yourself continuously over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, it's so much that I feel like uh, we have in common. I really appreciate you. Um, I got a gift for you. I'm going to go ahead and okay. grab it. Okay. Um, before we get out of here, can you tell everyone how to find you on social media? And I'll go ahead and grab this for you. Yes. So I'm on Instagram. It's my first and last name, Natalie Vulevic, N-A-T-A-L-I-E-V-U-L-E-V-I-C. All right. And this Thank is so the gift right here. This is the very first book that I wrote. It's Controversial. Oh, wow. Uh, the title and the cover art. This. Yes. I always said, fuck school. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. And uh, but when you read it, you'll understand. Like I always tell people, I make sure I stress, stress it. I'm not telling anybody not to go to school. Right, it's right. understanding what you're going for, because a lot of times, you know, I felt like society put that on us that we have to go to be successful. Right. And you really don't. Um, spending all this money. All this money. Buying. Yeah, yeah. and. When I graduated, I couldn't find a job in my field, mm -hmm. and I was just trying to figure it out. So on the cover, I, I was like, you know what? I'm, I said, you know what? I told my brother about it. He said, man, you think that's kind of harsh? And I said, yeah, but when you read it, you'll understand. So I, I was working two jobs. I quit. I went home. I started writing. Um, after I quit my second job, I went home and started writing. And one of the fav my favorite people that I like to listen to, even though he passed away now, was Bob Proctor. And I remember one of the Famous quotes he said, he said, if you can hold it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. So I had the vision that I was going to write a book. I didn't know what it looked like at the time, yeah. but I had the title. And I was like, here it is. So at my book signing, I held it up. I was like, I'm holding it in my hand. That's so dope. Yeah. So and now the cover to me, I tell people, is like, I'm looking at my younger self, looking at my son, saying what I would do differently, knowing what I know now. Mm -hmm. um, so I hope you enjoy the book. I, I'll, I'll sign it for you before we get out of here. Okay. But um, I really thank you again for taking the time to sit with me. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the Cross the Line podcast. And, you know, if you need anything, definitely let me know, man. I, I really appreciate you take, taking the time and good luck thank with you everything. For like, me. I appreciate oh, it. Oh, no problem. Yeah. I believe in you. So thank you. Yeah, I know you, you're going to get there. So hopefully, everybody enjoyed this episode of the Cross the Line podcast, Self Investment Tour. So, till next time, keep chasing your dreams. Thank you for listening. I'm Natalie Bolivic, fashion model and TV host, and tune in to Cross the Line podcast.